Generic data type is a type that is specified by a placeholder. This placeholder is replaced by a concrete type when this generic data type is used. Some of the examples that we've seen so far are option, result, and vectors. To show you why generic data types are useful, let's begin by recreating the option type. The option type has two types. It's an enum and it has two types. Sum with some kind of value, let's call this type T or none. Imagine that this option only handles I32. Now the option is not specific to the type I32, so maybe you want another option that handles U32. In this case, you need to create two options, one for I32 and then one for U32. Now we need to rename this. For example, let's say option I32 and option U32. The behavior we want from this option are the same. In both cases, if there's some kind of value, then we want to wrap it in a sum. And if there's no value, then we want to return a none. So this is where generic data types become useful. Instead of declaring a different option for each type, what we can do is create a generic data type for this option. The way we do this is by declaring a placeholder type inside the arrows. And then over here, instead of saying U32, we'll replace it with this placeholder type. So this is how an option is declared. It is a generic data type. The placeholder type here is named T. The value of this type can either be a sum with some value of type T or none. So this is how an option is defined. Let's look at another example. Another example that we've seen is a result type, enum result. And it can take on two values, OK with some type and error with some other type, let's say E. And to declare that both T and E are placeholder types, we will say T comma E. So this is how a result is declared inside Rust. It's generic over two types, T and E. And finally, vector is also a generic data type. Since it doesn't matter whether a vector holds U32, I32, or some other type, it's useful to have the vector as a generic data type. Okay, let's look at some examples of generic data type inside the main function. So first, let's start with option. Let's say let x of type option of U32 is equal to sum, and let's put in a number one, option colon colon sum. If you wanted to create another option where the type inside here, the concrete type is I32, then this is how we do it. Just replace this U32 with a I32. And for this example, let's put in a minus one. How about results? Well, the results are going to be similar to the example that we've seen for the options. So let's say that res is of type, result of type, let's say boolean and the string is equal to OK, true. Next, let's take a look at a vector. So to create a vector, we will say that b is equal to, there's several ways to create a vector. Here we'll use the macro, vec, exclamation mark, and then inside the brackets, we'll put in some numbers. Let's say one, two, and three. If you wanted to specify that the type of this vector is u32, then here's how you do it. Colon, vec, and then inside the arrows, we say u32. This will create a vector where each element will be of the type u32. Now let's say that instead of U32, we wanted to make this I32. Then here's how you do it. Just replace the type inside the arrows with the type that you want. And if you want Rust to infer the type, we can also replace this concrete type with a underscore. This will tell Rust to figure out this placeholder type. So these are some examples of creating generic data type. Finally, let's look at one more example of creating a generic data type. Let's say struct. Let's create a point. So to start off with, let's say that this point has two data, x of u32 and y of u32. So far, we can create a point as long as the type of x and y are u32. But what if we wanted to create a point of, let's say, i32 or some kind of float, let's say f32. This is where the generic data type will become handy. Here we can say t and then replace this with the placeholder type. Furthermore, if you wanted to specify a default placeholder type, here's how you do it. You say equals, let's make the default type u32. If you did not specify a type when you create this struct, it would default to the type u32. Let's create a point. Say that p0 is equal to point with x0 and y0. We can also specify the type. So let's say p1 of type point, let's create i32 is equal to x, let's say minus one, and y also equal to minus one. Okay, so these are some examples of creating generic data types in Rust. In the next video, I'll show you some examples of how to create functions that take in and output generic data types. See you in the next video.